February, March, April, and then our exams in May. You might think that's a lot of months left, but just think how quickly it went from September until now. Soon it's going to be August the 24th and you're going to be opening your results and they're either going to be good results or bad results based on your actions. So trust me, follow everything I tell you in this video and you can make these next few months unstressful and easy for yourself so then you can get your dream grades. I've actually seen over the last couple of years that so many students start caring about their exams in April. And it's just too late because that's when the anxiety levels are so high and even though you might end up following your perfect last minute revision schedule, you're still going to be revising in an unhealthy way. So scrap that. What I want you to do is start now, but not properly. What I mean by this is that from now until mid to end February, I want you to focus on two things, your weak subjects and making sure your resources are ready. Now you probably got your results back from your December mocks. Like I said in a previous video, I want you to use these results to determine your focus areas over your next month. So look at your results again and write down five of your weakest subjects in descending order. And then next to it, make another list of five subjects using the same subjects, this time in order of descending priority. So let's say maths and French were two of your weakest subjects. Then in that second list, maths is obviously going to be higher up as compared to French. I would personally do it so that I leave my highest priority subjects for a reviewing time over the weekend because that's when I have the most time and energy. And it doesn't matter how long you review the subject for. That can be 20 minutes or one hour, but that's all up to you. But how are you even going to review those subjects? Well, what I want you to do is get the exam papers that you did for your five weakest subjects and reattempt all the questions that you got wrong. If you have the exam papers and that's good, you can start straight away. But if you don't, just quickly ask your teacher to take the pictures of the questions you got wrong. What I would do is that I would revise the specific bits from the topic of that question, only take like a maximum of five minutes, and then I would reattempt that question. And then after that, I look at the mark scheme. And the reason why I don't look at the mark scheme before this is because once you've marked that reattempted answer, if you get nearly full marks, then you know it was because you didn't revise the content properly. But if you still manage to not get enough marks, then you know there's a problem in the way you're answering it. Then you look at the mark scheme, you see what they require, and then you change that for next time. And note that you don't have to do all of this with the one markers because for them, it's either you know it or you don't. So. That's pretty straightforward. Now, the other focus point over this next month is to make all your resources and make sure they're ready before the end of February. And I'll be honest here and say that despite the numerous amount of times I heard that making your resources in year 10 is the way to go, I'm still in a state right now where I'm making my flashcards for my week subjects. And if you're in that state as well, then not to worry too much because a month is better than nothing. I'm currently making my flashcards for English and French, which are two of my kind of weak subjects. And English currently I'm making flashcards on the best quotes for each play. And you might be wondering what resources I'm using to make those quotes. And I'm using multiple resources, for example, Mr. Salas, who's helped me structure the flashcards that's going to be full of analysis. Having access to good analysis is really easy thanks to the internet, but get a grade nine in English literature, you actually need really good analysis, which to be honest, is quite hard to find. But thanks to First Rate Tutors, the sponsor of this video, it's actually become a whole lot easier. Not only do First Rate Tutors provide really good meanings to each of the quotes that you're going to be needing for your analysis, but they also provide language devices as well as in-depth information about the character's thoughts and actions before they say those quotes. So that takes your analysis so much closer to the grade nine work, as well as all the quotes and themes that you might need, which every other student revises as well. They also have videos where there's walkthroughs of past papers. So you can apply all your knowledge, learn how to answer like a pro. And they have this for the plays that I do, John Macbeth, a Christmas Carol and an Inspector Calls, as well as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Power of Conflict Poetry, and so many other plays. And this is not just for English literature, but the whole of GCSE English language course as well. So for all of this in such good quality, you're probably wondering that it's gonna be about 200 pounds or at least 100 pounds. Well, you're wrong because this course only goes out for 59.99. It's a pretty logical investment for a grade nine, if you ask me. Let's fast forward to 20th February because by now you should have made all your resources and focused a good amount on your weak subjects. So now it's the real deal. I always say this for the big subjects like sciences. I think greetoedu.org is the best way to go because it has quick quizzes, videos and exam practice which is basically everything you need for a revision website if you tag cgp revision guides onto this then you basically can't go wrong and i don't see why you can't get grades 7 8 or 9 for your science exams and i say for you to learn content from the cgp revision guide i don't want you to just memorize everything from word to word it's best to learn the key points and you should know which parts you need to know and which parts you don't and i think the best way to learn it is using the look cover right check method you don't always have to write it down but you basically read it a couple of times you cover it whether you said matches 
what it says on the book. Over the last few months, if you made the resources like I told you to, make sure you're reviewing them after 20th of February, but make sure you're not doing it in a way that you do like three days in a row and then leave it for like a whole week because this is not the way your brain is designed to remember stuff for the long term memory. Instead, there's a much easier way for you to remember the stuff in the long term for the exam. And that's that, for example, if I was going over my flashcards for Macbeth today, then I would leave a whole week until my second review. Once I've done it for a second time, then I leave a whole another three weeks for my fourth and final review. I leave a whole another month. I know, I know that doesn't seem like enough reviews over big occasions to revise for a big of a subject like English. But trust me, that's how your brain actually puts the stuff in into your long term memory. And it's much easier than you thought. Another thing I want you to implement into your revision is that from March onwards, I want you to do one past paper for at least three subjects every week because that's going to come in way more useful than you doing 20 past papers like the night before one of your GCSE exams. I know what you're thinking. Abdullah, when are you going to talk about revision timetables and when should we use them? All right, let me tell you what I think about revision timetables. Personally, I don't like them and that's only because I'm not a person who sticks really well to my revision timetable, especially if it's for a long time. If I don't manage to do one task for one of the days, then I mess up the whole system because I keep pushing it forward. So I end up missing more and more tasks. So that's why personally, I like to create tasks before the beginning of every new day. But feel free to ignore me and make one if you've seen this successful for you. But the only thing I would say is that don't be too strict for yourself when following the revision timetable, especially if you're making it for a whole week's or month's revision. If you follow everything I told you in this video, then I don't see why you're not going to be opening your dream grades on August 24th. But the most important thing you have to do is be consistent. Once you can do that, you've basically mastered your revision and you'll be looking out for success. Do subscribe as the months get closer and they become more tense and I'll start uploading more hopefully. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.